Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are playing a donation deck request to play Hive Mind. Now this is a combo deck you don't see very often in legacy, but essentially what we're trying to do is cast a Hive Mind, which if you're unfamiliar with it, is a six mana enchantment which says whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, each other player copies that spell. Each of those players may choose new targets for the copy. So what we're doing is we're playing this and then we're playing one of the packs in our deck. So we can play Slaughter Pact, Pact of the Titan or Pact of Negation. Our opponent gets a copy and they might not be able to pay for it, so they will lose the game. Simple as that. We also have a different way of winning the game, which is Sudden Substitution. So for this one, it's four mana split second exchange control of target non-creature spell and target creature. Then the spell's controller may choose new targets for it. So it's we're going to be doing this and we're going to give our opponent creatures with Forbidden Orchard if they don't already have creatures. Quite a creature heavy format at the moment due to Bowmasters being in like everything. So we're going to have lots of targets for Southern Substitution. So all we do is we cast like Pact of the Titan, hold him priority, we Southern Substitution, which he has split seconds, so they can't be countered. And then we give them the Pact of the Titan. Will they be able to play four in a red or will they lose? That's the gist of the deck. To try and get the Hive Mind into play, we're running Show and Tell to sort of speed up the clock, but we also do have a bunch of fast lands in Ancient Tomb, City of Traitors, as well as three Lotus Petals. So we can show and tell as early as turn one, but maybe we can actually hard cast this if it comes to it in a long grindy game. Speaking of long grindy games, we've got 10 cantrips to find our pieces. Now this could be awkward in the world of Orcish Bowmasters. Is this amount of cantrips where we want to be, or should we be running something like a few impulse instead of the preordains maybe? Unclear, but the idea is if our opponents ping us for like three or four life, we don't really care if we're winning the game. So hopefully we're going to power through the Bowmasters rather than play around them. We also have a suite of counter spells in Force of Wheels and Days to keep things at bay and protect our combo when we're going off. That's pretty much it. It's quite a linear deck, but the games are going to play out relatively differently in terms of like which pieces we have and what we're looking for and how we interact with our opponent's stuff. So it should be quite interesting. And sideboard wise, We've got a little catch-all answer in Echoing Truth. We've got an Abray to blow some stuff up. Three Blood Moons to try and get free wins versus lands, which is quite popular at the moment. Four Defense Grids to beat Counter Magic. Four Ley Lines to beat Graveyard Decks. And a couple of Meltdowns. So this is a deck list that I took from Brian Cook's channel, The Epic Storm. I will link when he played this video in the description because you should definitely check it out. It was a really great league. But he made a few comments about the sideboard at the end and I've tried to sort of take that on board here and alter it. And this is what we came up with. So should be a bit of an interesting one today. And can't say I've ever cast a hive mind i don't think in my entire time playing magic so let's see how this runs there was once a deck the um the amulet titan deck in modern i think played hive mind as well uh, back in the day anyway so before we jump in remember to like and subscribe really helps the channel and if you would like a donation deck like this one or like something completely else uh you can contact me either just leave a comment or message me via the discord and we can sort that out for you all right let's play some hive mind we're on the play for round one our hand requires one additional mana to win the game it's probably okay sure we'll lead out on an island can't be waste standard off of it so that's pretty tasty gives us access to days here Pluto delta and no play from our opponents this is how we'd like to have a cantrip if possible okay we just got more protection when we do try and go off we don't want to show them the forbidden orchard until the last minute because that's kind of going to be not necessarily a giveaway of what we're doing because what we're doing is quite niche and i doubt many people have ever played against it but we don't want to give them any clues Flooded Strand, okay. So next time we just go off in our opponent's turn. And a Tundra. Okay. I like... Uh, we don't even need another blue card, actually. Um, so this lets us play around days ourselves. We'll play this with an Orchard. We'll play this Lotus Petal. We'll try and get our opponent to tap out. Uh, we could always try and just get them to, to die on their next turn, actually. Is that where we want to be here? Maybe it is. Let's crack this. Right, so we get another basic island. We're going to get a Volcanic Island. I'm just not sure how good this daze is going to be with all the mana our opponent has up. I think we want to try and let our opponent have... Okay, if they're going to tap play something at our end step, then that's going to be perfect. Because we want them to tap a little bit lower so our daze is effective here. And we're not under pressure, so we don't have to go off immediately, but we can try. Now, an important point of playing this deck on Magic Online is to make sure you hold the control button to hold full control when you play your Pact of Titan, so you get the chance of sudden substitution it. Are they just fetching or are they doing something? Sauron's Ransom, you say. In response, we're going to tap this for blue, which gives them a guy. Then we're going to go... So we could let's resolve to see more of their deck, but I think it's important that we don't let them draw additional counter spells. We'll cast this. 
Sudden substitution. This has split second. So now I have a Pact of the Titan they have to do something about. The Spirit also gives us something we can slot Pact. Pact of the Titan. Okay, so our opponent is dead. Excellent, we got there. Not too shabby. So I assume our opponent's on some sort of grindier control deck, is what it feels like. Is their mana base susceptible to Blood Moons? Maybe. Is Defense Grid more important than any of our count spells? Yes, yes it is. I think we don't want the Dazes. Is it the Dazes we don't want? I definitely have some amount of Bow Masters here. I'm trying to think, is it more important for us to get these? We definitely want the Defense Grids. We want to use our Force of Wills in a similar way to Defense Grids. Is our opponent just going to play around Daze? I think they are. Especially on the play. So I think we're going to roll like this. Maybe we should be boarding in an Echoing Truth here. I don't think we have to here. My Blood Moon might be useful against them. Hard to say. But the main way it looks like they're going to interact with us is counter spells. Right, we have a defense grid. We just need to find some other stuff here. Is this good enough? Island Ponder with the defense grid. We get a lot of new looks. Here, but we're looking for mana and one of our win conditions. That's quite a lot of things to be looking for with this hand. Maybe we're supposed to mulligan this. But it does have the defense grid. I know, I think we keep. We definitely want to ponder on turn one before Bowmasters can be a thing we have to worry about. Wouldn't mind drawing an island. All right. So we now have something that turns our Slaughter Pact on. Let's cast a Ponder. Uh, any order, a Brainstorm. Are we playing out this Lotus Petal now? I think so. If our opponent plays a, a Bowmasters, we want to fire off our Brainstorm in response. And having this up just allows us to do that. Okay. What are we looking at here? Flooded Strand. Okay, so we're going to cast this Ponder. And our opponent's going to cast Bowmasters in response. And then we're going to cast Brainstorm in response. Off of our petal, I think. Well, no, we're just going to have it. Um, I don't mind having another land, but I don't really want any of these other things. So I think we'll put these two back. Put this on top. And then we can crack this and brainstorm. But I don't really want to brainstorm just yet. Because our opponent is very much representing a Bowmasters over there. So they go for another turn Bowmasters. All right, they're going for a brainstorm now. We will join them in Bowmasters in a brainstorm turn here. All right, so we have the hive mind. We just need to get to the mana. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have enough lands to do it. We have a defense grid in the meantime. So what are we putting back here? If they start discarding us, we're going to want this brainstorm. So I want to put this brainstorm on top as a thing we can do later on. So I think we're going orchard and... No, we want to protect the hive mind, don't we? So I think we have to go brainstorm at the bottom and then hive mind. And this way we can protect ourselves from getting discarded. We won't lose our hive mind. Next turn we can play Defense Grid and just slowly keep playing out our lands until we're ready to combo off. Now there is a slight annoyance with the packs that we have right now, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Also, Defense Grid and Pact of Negation is a bit of a nombo I'm seeing here. First Flooded Strand, we will play our Defense Grid. Which might be good enough for a counter spell from our opponent, in which case it's kind of doing its job. Mystical Dispute. Mystical Dispute, that's an interesting one. Sure, we will not pay. We can overload our opponent. We can give them a Forbidden Orchard token. And then we can Slaughter Pact it. Pact of Negation, our own Slaughter Pact. But then they get a copy of that as well. And we'll have to, we'll have to do some uh, machinations to work it out exactly. But we're not going to cast this Brainstorm unless our opponent taps out of Bowmaster's Mana. Because there's just no need to give them a big threat. Because they're not putting us under any pressure right now. Right, there's the Bowmaster. So in response, we will cast a Brainstorm. Pact of the Titan is one that they're not going to be able to cast. Force of Will is going to help us push us through. Probably the Slaughter Pact is the one we don't need here. So the Slaughter Pact can go. And, and I guess we play the Scalding Tarn on top. Or are we trying to preserve the Hive Mind, I guess? Yeah, we'll keep the Hive Mind safe from discard. We should race this clock. I don't think our opponent has access to Red Mana. So the Pact of Titan is going to be a good one. I would like another blue card. So that we can do Force of Will and Pact of Negation to protect our combo. We've certainly got the time to try and do this because we're only taking a tiny little bit of damage here. So we can play out the Scalding Tarn, we can shuffle away the Slaughter Pact and then see how we go. Sauron's Ransom. Okay. Uh, yikes. Uh, we'll give them these two and hope they don't take the other one. Or are we supposed to split these up? We really don't want to get Thought Seized. Is it greedy to try and make them take this pile? Uh, if I give them Ponder... Force of Will, they'll probably take that. And I'd rather that than Thoughtseize, because Thoughtseize is harder for us to answer, I think. Okay, so they took the Ponder and the 
force the I think if I put pond a prismatic ending, they're liable to take the other pile. Because prismatic ending does nothing on this board state. And there's a ponder. So we're looking for defense grid and stuff like that. Or a blue card. I think with two layers of protection, we might be okay here. Right, our upkeep will crack this flood strand. Can get an island. And draw for turn. Another Pact of the Titan. If we play out... If we wait till we draw another blue card, we can have more protection. But our opponent's hand is pretty stacked with stuff over there. But one, two, three, four, five. We're pretty close to how defense goes. Again, we're not under huge amounts of pressure, so maybe we can survive this for a while. If something really scary happens, we can just hard cast a force of will. All right. We can also just play some packs of the Titan and beat our opponent down, which is an interesting approach, but I don't really want to do that approach. Sam Wise is stout hearted. Uh, yeah. I don't really care about this. This gives them a ring bearer, which doesn't really matter. It gives them back a land, which is card advantage, but it's not a card that we care about too much right now. So it looks like a sort of uh, Esper Vile deck. Right, so there's the Flood Strand. They can hold open Hardcast Force of Will here if they want. But we'll see. Mystic Sanctuary. What is this putting on top? A Thought Seize. Yeah, that's a bit, bit annoying. Okay, I think we're going to have to go on our next turn and hope we draw the blue card. Oh no, wait, they get to do the... Oh yeah, they get the thought seize now because they've got the ring bearer, right? Interesting. One, two, three, four. Okay. So we're going to take this and then we're going to have to hard cast the force of will. I think our opponent's got this one, truth be told. Monastery Mentor. It does end the game quickly. So we get some monks. And then we're basically dead on our next turn. So we're going to cast this. Uh, let's actually crack our Scalding Tarn first. And get ourselves a Volcanic Island. Let's cast this. One, two three, four, and we can give them one little guy because these aren't going to matter in the end of the day. We're dead on our opponent's next turn anyway. All right, so we know they got Force of Will. We have a Pact of Negation, so drawing another Pact of Negation would be pretty handy here. A Volcanic Island, that's not really the one. Let's just play around some permission though. All right, this is the thing we have that we can do, so here we go. Hive Mind. So they're going to fire off a Force of Will here. We can play around a little bit of soft permission, like a Spell Piss. A Force of Negation pitching Ponder. That feels like a problem for us because that means they still have this Force of Will in hand. Now, they might not have another blue card, which is what we have to hope for here. But we are very much dead on the next turn, so... Does our Pact of Negation work or do you have a blue card to go with your Force of Will? They do. That'll do. All right, let's go to the third and final game. I think I'm correct with my sideboarding here. We just want the defense grids in. Is there a question for playing Dazes on the play it's just more ways of trying to force through our defense grid i don't hate that as a strategy but then what are we cutting is the question are we getting rid of something like some preordains that makes it harder for us to find our combo okay so trying to balance the amount of protection we have versus the amount of finding spell um maybe we'll do a split here so we'll get rid of a couple of preordains but keep a couple of dazes in just because if we can force through this daze uh, this uh, defense grid we can combo in peace um Okay, this this works. So we'll play out this Flood Strand. This can get us an island. Our opponent can also Thought Seize us, as we've seen from their deck, which would be bad news for us. But no play on turn one from them. Another Show and Tell. So we could just jam a Show and Tell here and see if our opponent counterspells it. Just use it as a duress. And then next turn we can try and go for it. Just try and use this as a duress effect. I like that. So I guess we get an island here. I don't want this show and tell to resolve, but I want our opponent to counterspell it. I think they would have kept a counterspell here. If they don't counter this, it's going to backfire massively because they can get something good into play and we'll just get a land. But this land will not kill our Sea of Treads. All right, so we got the Force of Negation that we were getting. Excellent. That's what we were aiming for with that. Big fan of how that played out. So our opponent's got five cards in hand. Another show and tell. Do I just want to try this one again? What's the worst thing our opponent can put in against us? I think we just run it back. Go over the show and tell again. I think they have a counter spell. Please counter spell this opponent. All right, excellent. Oh, they're doing a brainstorm. It's not what we want to see. We're just casting good old fashioned mind rots. That's what these show and tells are. Now, if our opponent didn't have a counter spell, we could have just won this turn. But our opponent hasn't cast any cantrips. So, what would be in their hand? It's got to be interaction of some description. They're not going to have a bunch of like plows and things. So, all their interaction is going to be discard, which they would have cast by now, or counter magic. That was my logic. Oh, please don't let this resolve. Yes, there's the force of will. Excellent. Excellent. 
And then next turn, we do the Pact of the Titan, Sudden Substitution with Pact of Negation back up. Excellent. Very happy with how I've played this game so far. Let's see how bad our opponent's play is here. Thoughtseize. That's a really annoying one. We played this game so well. We just extracted all the counter spells from our opponent. And then they just found a Thoughtseize. So we're going to lose a Sudden Substitution here. So now we're trying to draw... They could take the Pact of the Titan, because that's one they can't realistically pay at any point, because they have no red mana. Whereas Pact of Negation they might be able to pay for. And it also requires a window, so it's something you can play around a little bit. So we'll see. I suspect it's a Sudden Substitution, because if they look at our hand, that does win the game next turn. Yeah, there it goes. Frustrating. An island. Are we getting rid of this City of Traitors to play this island? I don't think we are. I think we're just passing the turn, looking for Hive Mind or a Sudden Substitution. That's really, uh, really got us. I feel we were so close there. We did the right thing of baiting these things out. Maybe we could have got through there if they just had just the one layer of protection. That's the problem with these blue-black decks that are everywhere right now, is they have Hand Disruption and Counter Magic. Just so much to deal with. Are we going to start playing out Scalding Tarns so we can make our Brainstorms better? So we have three mana now. So we can go up to four mana this turn if we play this for one turn. Obviously that doesn't help us, but then... If we play a land this turn, we have two mana. Next turn, we have three mana, which is what we need to go off. And we have four mana in turn after. So the only way we get punished here is if, if we play a land out and we draw a sudden substitution, that's bad. So I think we just have to pass. Oh, that's frustrating. Sauron's Ransom, sure. Mm, a tricky pile here. Um, I don't really want to give them the Snap Caster Mage. That Caster Brainstorm is quite strong. I think they'll take this pile. It's still very strong. Yeah, they don't really have a good way of dividing these cards up. Because Snapcaster is access to anything. Yeah, so I took the, the Mystical Dispute and the Ponder. The Mystical Dispute still costs one from their graveyard from the purposes of Snapcaster Mage. All right. And a Mystic Sanctuary goes pretty well with the Sauron's Ransom here. We're going to put Force of Will on top, I suspect. Or Force of Negation, maybe. Because that's when they can actually hard cast relatively easily while still doing other things. And they know the things we're trying to cast are... Yeah, so there's a Force of Negation. So the things we're trying to cast are non-creature spell. So the window is very much closing for us here. I probably definitely found that thought seize they hit us with off of the brainstorm because otherwise they would have fired it off earlier. So that was uh, an unfortunate amount of interaction our opponent had there. And they've got more and more every turn. Uh, let's take our small bit of damage here. Forbidden Orchard. It's not a great one either is it? Right we're passing the turn again. All right so we're going to take two damage again. We got six more turns at this current pace. Another Pact of the Titan. Samwise getting their fetch land back. Sure. Getting some more ring bearer action. We get rid of Scalding Tarn here. That's tough. So now our opponent's got Force of uh, Negation and Mystical Dispute. So that's going to be a problem. Two more turns. Wasteland. That's very good. This is the turn we draw Sudden Substitution, I suppose. They should definitely be fighting this off. Sure. Should play out this. And pass. So we need to draw Hive Mind and get our show and tell to resolve through all of our opponent's nonsense. Not an easy task. I think we are dead here though. Yep, Snapcaster Mage. Into the Thought Seas. Yeah, we can't beat this. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We played really well into our opponent's disruption to use it all, but they just found one additional piece and it was the specific piece they needed of Thought Seas as well. A counter spell wouldn't be good enough there. We just kind of got rocked, unfortunately. All right, let's go to round two. Foo's Van Gogh is a dredge specialist. I think we will mulligan our hand here. We need to go fast in this matchup. Uh, this does not do it. I have played one of Foo's Van Gogh's decks on the channel before. Uh, we got counter spells. I guess we keep this. Sun substitution. They're going to have creatures. That's something. How useful is this pact of negation going to be? Uncertain. We have to lose two cards. I think it's probably Brainstorm. Yeah. Not happy with this hand, but it doesn't take a lot for it to get there, and we do have a Ponder to help. We don't have the turn one counter spell, but we do have four ley lines in our sideboard. Also, the build that I've seen Mafuz then go on lately is a build with dazes and stuff. And there we go, there's the daze. Dazes and Force of Will. So it's a lot slower than regular dredge, but with counter spells. Alright. So we have a Ponder. They're gonna daze our Ponder. How important is it to me to get this ponder off? Incredibly important, I think. Okay, so the hive mind we want, the land we want, the Pact of the Titan, we don't need. We need one more mana here. Put this on the bottom, 
then the hive mind, then the scalding tarn. Okay. So you can draw the hive mind, then shuffle with scalding tarn. We're not doing great, but our opponent doesn't have any dredging going on right now. So we've got a decent chunk of time to work with here. So there's the hive mind. I don't think we want the pact of the titan here. Let's just play out the scalding tarn. Our opponent's probably going to be cagey. Maybe we're looking at an otherworldly gaze end of turn. No. Underground C. And our upkeep, we're going to crack this. Four. We don't really care about our mana base here because they're not going to interact with our mana base. So, Scalding Tarn. So we'll this island they know about. So next turn we want to cast Show and Tell into Hive Mind with Pact of the Titan. Our opponent isn't doing anything, which makes me think they might have a Force of Will in hand. A Stinkweed Imp. That's a creature for sudden substitution if our Hive Mind doesn't work. Okay, they're going to flash us back. I don't think they're going to hit anything we have here. They named Brainstorm, which is a fair shout to name against the blue deck. Do they have a Countess Burn in hand? I guess we're going to find out. We could draw a Force of Will here. That'd be pretty easy. Well, I don't ask, don't get, right? So let's go and get a Volcanic Island. We will cast Show and Tell. We don't beat Force of Will, Blue Card, and Days. But we do build, beat either Days or Force of Will. Let's put Pact of Titan into play. Our opponent gets a copy. We let their copy resolve. They're casting a Force of Will. So this doesn't work. Because we get a copy of Force of Will. That targets their Force of Will. Once the Hivewind's in, it's in. This Force of Will should have gone on the uh, Show Tell. Have yourself a Red Giant. Enjoy your turn. All right, Dredge. We would like four times Leyline as a Void, please. Our opponent does have some tricksy stuff over there. Um, let's get rid of Dazes. Okay, we have two Leyline in the Voids. Our opponent's on five cards. We have Leyline in the Void. We have a way of protecting Leyline in the Void. Our opponent pretty much can't win through Leyline in the Void. All right, so we need to find our win condition, but we've slowed our opponent's roll pretty effectively. Let's play this one out. Next turn we can maybe do some sort of brainstorm shenanigans. Negation mm. is another blue card to pitch to force of will, so we don't have to lose our sudden substitution. We will need our opponent to have a creature, but they're incentivized to play creatures out when Lena and the Void is in play as well. A brainstorm, sure. Right, over to us. Forbidden Orchard, that helps. So one more thing, and we can try for the combo. Have to be a little bit careful in some respects, because our opponent can have counter magic that leaves them... I guess they have to counter their packs of time, actually. Yeah, no, we should be right. So the Brainstorm. So they're just using that careful study to loot through the other Brainstorm card and just try and dig into something. But if we, we need a land and a blue card, ideally. What's our opponent got over there? A Cabal Therapy targeting us. Um, I don't think they've seen the Southern Substitution. Sure, we're going to let this one hit. I think they're going to name Hive Mind or Show and Tell. The name's Show and Tell. Sure. We have a land here. It's kind of a land. Right. The opponent's got three cards in hand. So we'll hold priority. We'll cast Pact of the Titan. We will let that Forbidden Orchard trigger resolve. We will Sudden Substitution, these things. So they have a Pact of the Titan they need to do something about. All right, we got there. Yeah, so powerful sideboard cards are powerful, obviously. But... The actual core engine of the deck seems pretty solid. Let's go to round three. We're on the draw here. We're close. I think we keep this. We have Basic Island Ponder, which is not a bad way to start a game of Magic the Gathering. All right. Watery Grey. We're getting Thought Seize on turn one. We are. Yuck. I can't imagine this matchup's very good. Again, it's the combination of Hand Disruption and Counter Magic that is so potent from these blue-black sort of tempo-y style decks. Our opponent's on Death Shadow, as we can tell from the Watery Grave. Awkward for us. I took the show and tell. It's going to get our basic island. Don't want to get caught up by any wastelands. Cast a ponder with the art that they know about. Or while they're dazing. Are we dazing back? We do have another ponder. We'll let that go. Are we going to play out this Lotus Petal now? I don't think so. We might need to move some cards around with a brainstorm soon. Right, our opponent's got a ponder. Back over to us. So we'll play out our Lotus Petal now so we can pay around a daze if we want to, but... I don't mind our opponent's days on the previous turn. Right, let's go for Ponder here. Forbidden Orchard is one of the things we want. The Pact of Negation is interesting to me here as well, as is the Ponder. So I think we're going to go Pact on the bottom, then the Ponder, then the Orchard. We can play this out. We do risk getting Wastelanded. But we're going to need to build up our mana base if we want to try and execute our combo. Right, so they're playing the land first before Thought Season us, so we can't daze them. I guess this happens, we probably lose the Pact of the Titan, because that's the unique piece here. They took a Sudden Substitution. 
Interesting. So we have a ponder. Let's see if we can do anything with this ponder. Uh, yeah, this is certainly a bunch of stuff. We can try and go right now. Oh, my opponent's scooping. Interesting. Okay. Oh, they just had to go. So we've won the match because our opponent had to go somewhere, I guess. But I think we are winning that game. We can either go that turn with days back up, or we can go the next turn with days and um, Pact of Negation back up. So it's a win. I'll take it. Let's go to round four. All right, we don't need much for this hand. For round four, let's give it a keep. We can play on a basic, which is something I'm enjoying about this deck. Island Ponder from our opponent. Good way to be. We can try a Brainstorm in our opponent's end step. Forbidden Orchard. I'm going to fetch now around potential Stifles, because we are getting a basic anyway. And we're going to pass a turn. So Forbidden Orchard might be a thing we need to make a token, but we're looking more towards a Hive Mind kill here. A Stoneforge Mystic. Um, yeah, that's fine by me. You tap your mana out, opponent. So we have a Daze to protect. Do I think our opponent's got two layers of protection? These Stoneforge decks tend not to be Daze decks, so I think I'm going to fire this off at end step, see if we can find the combo. A Pact of Negation. Hmm. That's not quite going to get us there, is it? That's unfortunate. Um, okay, I think we'll put back a Volcanic Island and this Pact of Negation that we're about to draw. Now, we could always just try to put Hive Mind into play and see how we fare. But that seems a little bit loose to me. So we have this. We know one of the cards on top. Let's brainstorm now what we can. Two more show and tells. Yuck. That's not really what we want. So about these two lands. Crack our fetch now. We're still going to get an island here. We don't need a red source just yet. I don't think we need to fetch around Stifle, but we're definitely cracking there anyway. So might as well play super safe. Short, Cauldra. We can take a few hits from this. It's not the end of the world. An ancient tomb. What are we doing here? We can play our ancient tomb. If, our opponent, if we have Hive Mind in play, our opponent plays a spell. We cast Pact of Negation target in their spell. They get a copy of Pact of Negation. They can either target their spell or our Pact of Negation. Neither of those particularly helps. And then once their Pact of Negation is resolved, we can daze our own spell. Yeah, that works. All right, let's give this a go. There is a Force of Will. Okay. Our opponent probably thinks we're on some sort of omni tail build. But they don't know. We are there the next time. We do need to find something right now. Sudden Substitution. We don't have enough mana to do anything with this, do we? Although we can just... Um, we can just get hold of their Phyrexian Germ token. We don't have enough mana to play this and this. So we would need seven mana. We've got two, three, four, five, six. Um... How are we supposed to navigate this one? We need to cast this Sudden Substitution. I don't think we want to play out the Forbidden Orchard here. I'm just trying to think if we need the mana. We don't really want to show them the Orchard here. We need our opponent to play a spell for us to get anywhere. And then we can steal their Frex and Jeb token. Uh, if we show and tell, put in a Hive Mind, we don't have any spells we can cast to then use our own Pact of Negation on. So I think we are on the... Play Ancient Tomb, and then try and sub Sudden Substitution to steal their Frexian Germ token. That's my plan. We need our opponent to cast a spell. Our opponent is not casting a spell here. Let's see if they go do anything before damage. No. Okay. We were close, but not quite there. We kind of felt the awkwards of Pact of Negation there. All right. Sideboard-wise, I would like Defense Grids, please. What is going to be useful here? Do you want Dazes on the play and get rid of these forces? Just because we're trying to go fast. Pact of Negation is an awkward one, but we can Pact of Negation our own cantrips is the plan with our defense grid in play. A couple of force in a couple of days. Sure, we'll try this. Decks like this are always a bit tricky to sideboard with. We have so many core components. Um, yeah, this is pretty good. We have a turn two defense grid, a turn three kill. It's kind of what we came to do. Our okay, opponent is Jeskai. Understood. Let's crack this. We'll go and get ourselves an island here. Let us play Defense Grid. What do you have to say about that opponent? Nothing. Exciting. So next turn, we cast Pact of Negation, uh, Pact of the Titan. Then we Sudden Substitution. Oh, we need a creature for Sudden Substitution, don't we? Um, then we cast Pact of Negation. Then we Sudden Substitution. Oh, no, we still need the creature. Come on, brain. We need our opponent to play a creature in their deck that looks like it's probably going to have Dragon's Rage Channelers in, maybe? Right, no creature from our opponent. Okay, I think we brainstorm first. Hmm, 
not not a lot of use here like we can definitely use these sorts of things to uh make sure that our combo goes through slaughter pact how useful are you going to be not very I would. so i think it's probably the slaughter pact and the show and tell that go back and then we cast a ponder we're looking for forbidden orchard the other packs of the titan doesn't uh doesn't do anything so we got any order and shuffle right we found another land don't hate that if we end up in weird casting packs of the titan beatdown rule world i don't really want to be in that world but it's something we might be able to do so our opponent we want them to cast a creature here if they cast a creature they lose the game but i don't think they can win the game without casting a creature so i don't hate this position are they just going to sit back on their three mana and try and play around defense grid or are they going to prismatic ending this turn feels like an ending a teferi time raveler similar but different okay they're plussing it that's very interesting to me uh they didn't play a creature yet so we're still still not getting there with these so they plan to bounce it this turn i did feel like a real shields down moment they didn't need to have all right so there's our defense grid a narset okay that's not a creature I'm not enjoying this lack of creatures our opponent seems to be red elemental blast defense grid a spell pierce I will f pay for this. I think this is an important one to resolve. Uh, alternatively, well, we could have played this turn entirely differently. We could have played out our City of Traitors. But we still need the, the Forbidden Orchard for the Southern Substitution there. So I think we're just going to pay. And then I guess we play out the Forbidden Orchard. And we'll pass the turn. Are we going to get Wield here? They might do it in our turn if they keep their mana open. They don't have enough for that. Actually. They need another two mana for that. So it seems unlikely. Days undoing. Okay. There's a wasteland. Days undoing. Awkward. Days. Oh, we're so close to winning this game. All right. Uh, I think we keep this for the purposes of um, brainstorms. So close to winning that game. That's slipping away. Where are their creatures? If they'd have played a creature at any point in this game, they would have lost. Now they're going to play one, aren't they? Short. Sure, we lose our defense grid. We lose our Forbidden Orchard. We could have tapped it to give them a 1-1, one, one, but our opponent's got to find a win condition here. Ancient Tomb. Uh, I'll play the Flooded Strand, and then we can use the Ancient Tomb as a thing to shuffle away, because our Flooded Strand can provide the shuffle effect. This also represents High Cast Force of Will, not that we can cast it through a Teferi. And now they play a creature. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, it does give them a 3 10 clock, but this game is pretty much over, I think. They had a Red Blast as well. Yeah, I think we can scoop this one up at this point. I think we can draw enough cards. Yeah, we basically just <clears throat> bricked for ages. And our opponent also didn't cast their creature. So we just couldn't quite get the win there. And we were... We had so much ability to win that match. It's kind of upsetting that one. But sometimes the variants will go against you. I'd be quite happy to play into this matchup numerous times, I think. I don't think the Days Undoing build is where I would be personally with Jeskai. But they probably just have the one days I'm doing, actually. And they're probably just a, re a pretty solid Jeskai control, thinking about it. But this feels like a match that we should be winning. They give us plenty of time. And we have defense grids and stuff. But yeah, sometimes it doesn't happen. Let's go to the final round. Okay, we're pretty close to being able to kill our opponent on turn two. Here. Depending on what they play, we might even be able to do that. That's what our opponent plays here. Basic Swamp. Schooling Tarn. Are we playing out our Lotus Petal here? That kind of gives our opponent a clue as to what we're doing. I don't think it's necessary to play out the petal here. Uh, could our opponent be playing some sort of prison-y deck? I don't, with Trinisphere, it's possible. But we do have that covered with a daze. So. Now, they might just entomb uh, in step, but we have that covered with a daze. Oh, they just sucked in the boy. I see. Now, which art swamp did they get? The same art, okay. Right, so there might be mono black, like shadow. Right, a ponder here. You can get bow mastered. I don't care if they bow master us here. Force of Will, Force of Will, Pact of Negation. Uh, we need our opponent to play a creature here, ideally. I don't think we just go any order and shuffle. Okay, then we'll play this out. Uh, I think we'll play our Lotus Spell now. So our opponent plays a creature. We can counterspell something and then sudden substitution to steal their creature. So, for example, if they were to... What is this? Search your library for a black card with mana value less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it in your hand and shuffle your library. Hmm, I'm going to say no to this. Because the thing they're going to get is a one mana spell, and we won't be able to use days to counter that. So if they're going to get Thought Seize, which is what I think they were going to get. We want them to reanimate their troll. That's how we win this game. Just put the little troll into play. Cabal Therapy. You're not going to hit here. 
I got a name show and tell, I believe. Or sneak attack, because we didn't play the show and tell last turn. That's a show and tell, sure. We are a show and tell deck. But not that kind of show and tell deck. Now they have the information that they don't need, want to have a creature in play now. Which does make things awkward for us. But hopefully makes things awkward for them too. Show and tell. Interesting. Do we play this show and tell hive mind right now? Where does that get us? If they play a spell, we can't pay for our own pact of negations. We're going to need another turn. If our opponent plays any spell, we get to copy it. Or do we just hold up this sudden substitution? And if our opponent plays a creature and another spell, then we just get them. So, for example, if they were to play a creature and then flashback Cabal Therapy, they would lose their creature. So that's not going to work for us, actually, is it? If they were to play an Orcish Bowmasters here, that would be great. But I don't think they will, because what we're doing is face up. I don't know, it's a tricky one. We do potentially need to watch for opposition agent here. So I'm not going to crack this fetch unless we have to. A Prismatic Vista. Are they playing another colour? Are they playing blue, perhaps? All right, so we'll play this island. Is there anything to make a creature? Or do we just jam this hive mind and leave our opponent in an awkward spot? But if we fire this off and they have a wasteland, we're just in trouble. Um, interesting. I think they'll counter this show and tell. And then we have a choice of whether or not we're fighting over it. I've got the feeling they're playing blue, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay, they're playing green. Okay, so if they cast a spell, we Pact of Negation. I don't think they're going to cast a spell on their end step here. We have the Pact of Negation days combo, so anything they cast, we can fiddle with, unless they have... Actually, we don't even care about Veil of Summer because we're countering our spells, not theirs. That's pretty handy. A Bone Picker. Not one I was expecting to see. Let's counter this. Where would you like to put your Pact of Negation opponent? Island. This is our Pact of Negation, isn't it? We don't want to pick this. All right. So our opponent's going to lose in their upkeep unless they can somehow muster up two blue sources. So our opponent's like mono black stuff. I don't really know what's going well, on. Sorry, not mono black. They've got green in there as well. So I've got three less to cast. Interesting. Uh, so we're looking at getting discarded. They got some stuff going on with graveyards. Do I want to board in these as a hedge, or do I just want to stick with what we've got here and see how we fare and just try and sort of raw power our way through it? Slaughter Pact can still kill the Forbidden Orchard tokens. Sure. We're uh, thinking maybe we just want this Miser's Echoing Truth, but we can see for game three. Uh, we've got some of the things we need and some of the things we don't. All right, so we do get to fire off a Brainstorm, potentially into Bowmasters, which is something we have to be wary of. Dark Ritual, sure. Then we can get more of an indication of what our opponent's up to. Adaptive Void Walker, that's fine. Then the Thought sees us. No, they go Swamp Cycle. All right, that's a fine turn. They got Swamp. So they, they're presenting the clock that we have to beat here. Question is, uh, I think we do want to play this one out, given the deck they're playing. Do we want to Brainstorm now to dodge Orcish Bowmasters? Do we care about Orcish Bowmasters if we can win the game? Probably not. So maybe getting that extra card to shuffle away would be better. I'm going to take three from the Dalphi, as expected, and another Dalphi. So with one more mana, we can win here, right? Because we cast Brainstorm, then we pack up negation our Brainstorm, then we sudden substitution. So I don't think we're casting the Brainstorm here. So we just pass a turn, and next turn we can kill our opponent, and maybe that'll be the end of the league. We'll see. What do we have in our exile? Nothing at present. Good. Having a win condition that is split second feels pretty good. Obviously, they can still count a spell or do whatever to other bits and pieces. But all right, I think it's the turn we win the game. And this, do they have opposition agent? If they have opposition agent, we still win. So that's fine by me. So a whole priority to blue. Cast a brainstorm. In response, we will cast this pact of negation targeting this. And in response to that, we will sudden substitution to get ourselves a cheeky little Daffy Void Walker. Okay. So that didn't actually work for us because they changed the target to sudden substitution, which was still in the stack at the time. So they're not going to have the trigger here. An Orcish Bowmasters. Yeah, that's pretty good. So this is going to be lethal damage, isn't it? Um, is there a way that we can Pact of a Titan to block? I don't think so. I think we just did. All right, our opponent's just playing like some black creatures. Not really sure what the green's for in their deck. Interesting. Um, all of our stuff is better on the play. If you just run it back, if you want an abrade in there, 
just don't want the preordains just in case. Do you want an echoing truth just in case instead of a preordain? Maybe. All right. It's not the turn one, is it? But uh, it doesn't need much to win the game. I don't really want our volcanic island to get hit, but I do want to have a land in place for days. So I guess we are doing this. They're a discard deck, so we're going to play our zero drop there. Okay. So I don't need a huge amount of mana to go off here. Show and tell wins us the game. If they play a creature and we draw a sudden substitution, we win the game. So, Cabal Therapy. What are they going to name here? How important is it to me to protect my hand? Quite important. Just say no to this. Slaughter Pact. Let me play this one out. Adathi Voidwalker. That's if it becomes a problem, we can bounce it. We can't kill it with a Slaughter Pact. But it gives us Tiger of Sudden Substitution if we draw it. Pact of Negation. That's not the one, is it? So we're a soul land away from winning the game. Sure. So we've got like 12 or so draws that win us the game next turn. And if we draw a land, any land, then the following turn, any land wins us. I don't hate this position we found ourselves in. But our opponent definitely can mess with us in ways I don't like. Just not really sure what's in their deck. I'm expecting to lose to something I haven't seen for a very long time or even at all. We'll find out. Paying costs. Oh, we're doing that, are we? I see. That makes a little bit more sense. Pact of the Titan. Not the one we want here. Uh, so what we can do here is we can let our opponent discard their whole hand and then we can bounce their guy. So I'm pretty glad that we boarded in the old protection here. Now if they cast Veil of Summer first, that's going to be a different situation. I think Veil of Summer only affects your, things your opponents do. I think it's hexproof rather than... So you can still Chain of Smog yourself all the live long day. Chain of Smog. Cast Chain of Smog targeting us. Interesting if true. Um, okay. We'll get rid of a Slaughter Pact. And it's Pact of Titan or Pact of Negation. I think it's the Pact of Negation that goes here. I do not wish to copy this. Just a little two mana mind drop there. This might make our opponent think that we don't have an answer as well. Right, can we draw one of the many cards on deck that wins us the game? We cannot. Awkward. Okay. So we have to survive another turn. Uh, cast Chain of Smog targeting us. Okay. Get rid of a Hive Mind and a Patch of a Titan. We do not wish to copy the spell. Our opponent's deck makes more sense. Although I'm not sure what the, the weird little bird thing they played in the first game was all about. Not a card that I'm familiar with. So we're going to take five here. So we will need to bounce their creature next turn. We could bounce it this turn. We can bounce the Witherbloom Apprentice this turn and see if we can... So I'll take two damage away this turn. Look for two damage next turn. No, I think we just have to draw the thing. We've got so many draws that win us the game here. City of Traitors. That's one of them. Blue, two, two, blue. Pact of Negation. So we can lose this game if our opponent can string together two instants in their upkeep in response to the trigger. Any two instants will kill us because of the Witherbloom Apprentice's ability. Uh, this puts us to one. We've got an instant to follow up with. Uh, oh, they're going to slaughter pack their own thing here, aren't they? And to drain us for the last points of damage, aren't they? They're casting a Pact of the Titan here. We get our own Pact of the Titan. Then the Witherbloom Apprentice kills us. All right. That last game felt incredibly unlucky, as, the other, as did one of the other games we lost. So... Pretty awkward. I think this deck definitely felt like a 3-2 deck. We got jammed up twice by the Winds of Fate, unfortunately. Let's talk about the deck. So this deck is obviously quite a linear sort of combo deck, really. And we did run into a problem. Like, we had the win absolutely sewn up against Jeskai. We just needed a creature. We just never got there. Because sometimes we're running a three-card combo, or more even. Like, Forbidden Orchard, Sudden Substitution, and Pact of Titan is a three-card combo. Or um, trying to do the Pact of Negation thing. That can sometimes, you know, when you're trying to play your own spell to then Pact it to get the Hive Mind to go through. So you're kind of like a four card combo there. We need Show Tell into Hive Mind. Then you need another spell. Then you need Pact of Negation. And that just feels like too much. There are significantly better combo decks that you can play in Legacy. Also, the, the things that are going to ruin us combo-wise are probably going to ruin a lot of other decks, you know, like Hand Disruption, Discard Spells, stuff like that. And sometimes our combo doesn't win the game. So we could do Pact of the Titan, but if our opponent happens to be a red deck that's got the mana, 
then they can pay for it. Or same with Slaughter Pact. Maybe they'll have Black Mana, which is everywhere right now because of Bowmasters being in every deck. It just means that a lot of the time, even if we combo off, there's going to be a fail rate for us actually achieving the thing we're dedicating our entire deck to do. And that, to me, doesn't feel like a place I want to be. I remember the Hive Mind deck in Modern a long time ago that was actually a Primeval Titan deck. So it was like Amulet Titan. Um, because you're running all these packs like uh, Pact of Negation and Summoner's Pact anyway, you just played a couple of copies of Hive Mind and sometimes got people. I don't know if something like that in Legacy is viable because obviously the whole Amulet mana base is not really going to work very well in Legacy. But I don't know. I, don't, I, don't, I feel there must be a different way of playing Hive Mind than this particular build. It didn't feel... It didn't feel bad. Maybe I should have been mulliganing, mulliganing more aggressively, just trying to get turn one, turn twos as often as I could. But the fact that we have a win condition that has split second felt good. But the fact that we need our opponent to cooperate sometimes for us to ever win the game, if we got subs and substitution, that that did not feel good. I think this deck needs maybe some more Forbidden Orchards, even though it can jag up a little bit. Although Legacy is very heavily creature-oriented at the moment due to Bowmasters. So... It's kind of annoying that we don't have anything there. But again, I, th I think 3-2 is fair for this deck, right? It's the thing we were very close to finishing up. Two of our rounds, we got very unlucky to lose, I think. And that's just the way the game's going to go sometimes. In that last round, if we'd have bounced the, the with a Bloom Apprentice, we could have played around the line that cost us. So not necessarily unlucky. I think we definitely uh, could have played that one in a different fashion. So yeah, if we'd have bounced the mage, we were still taking the same damage on that attack, but they wouldn't have had the ability to drain us. So yeah, actually, I think we punted that one rather than getting unlucky. We got unlucky that I'm an idiot who hasn't played this deck very much, I guess. But uh, there we go. And our friend wasn't casting anything, but I guess they had the... They only needed one instant because they had the Voidwalker in play. All right, I'm not going to beat myself up too much about that one. This deck should have gone 3-2, though. Uh, Cyborg felt fine. Didn't really feel there's anything else I wanted. Our deck's very linear, so there's not really much we can actually do to improve it post-board. Like, you know, we, we bring in four copies of, like, one of our things, generally speaking, or, like, a, a little bit of removal or whatever. But if our fundamental plan isn't particularly good in a matchup, then it's probably still not going to be good in a matchup. And that feels like where we're at a lot of the times in the format, because there's so much blue-black, sort of tempo-y, control -y type stuff going on that's going to mess with your hand and counter your spells that I don't think this deck is where I want to be in Legacy right now, but it's fun to play something a bit different, a bit wild. If you would like a donation deck on the channel like this, or like whatever you like, contact me either via the Discord or just drop me a comment and we can sort it out. All right, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching and goodbye.